back in 2013, about seven years ago, seven years ago, actually around uh, this time, uh, like at the end of July, I started making plans to move to Seattle, uh, Seattle and attend Seattle University. The, uh, the wild thing about it was I hadn't even been uh, officially uh, admitted into Seattle University. Uh, but like, I guess like a, an act of faith or whatever, um, I made the move. And it wasn't one of those smooth moves. I actually, um, I, I was in Memphis um, and I didn't have a lot of money. I, it'd be safe to say I didn't have any money. Uh, I had my car. I sold my car uh, for $1,000 and um, made a trip to Atlanta for two weeks and then from there uh, moved to Seattle. Um, and there were people uh, after the move that used to ask me, people um, in Tennessee and in Atlanta, they used to ask me, uh, weren't you scared? You know, did you have friends or relatives in Seattle? I'm like, no. Um, what I had was um, some friends, longtime friends who grew up in Seattle who didn't, li who didn't live there anymore. Uh, and they kind of helped me uh, connect with some really good people um, when I first got there. Um, but as far as some people that, you know, once I got off the plane, I immediately went over to their house to crash on their couch or whatever. No, I didn't have anything like that. So they were asking that once they realized that I didn't have any kind of initial support system, uh, when I first moved there, they were asking, weren't you scared? I was like, I was a little nervous, um, but I was also excited. I was excited about moving to Seattle. Um, people used to ask me, uh, the, the, the entire four years, people used to ask me, um, what was it about Seattle? What was it? Because... For years, I wanted to move to Seattle, um, but they would be like, well, why Seattle? You know, and I was like, I don't know. Uh, I saw Sleepless in Seattle or something like that. Um, maybe I had um, had enough time to imagine all these, poss all these uh, positive possibilities that could go along with uh, moving to Seattle and maybe some of that was fueling me didn't matter whether or not uh, what I was imagining or what I was fantasizing uh, what could happen if I went to Seattle it didn't matter whether or not those things became a reality it was just something that was fueling me to make that move and then go to se seminary um, but I didn't I didn't dwell on all the things that could go wrong. And in retrospect, it's true that a lot of things could have gone wrong, but they didn't. And in my personal belief is maybe it had something to do with the type of attitude and the type of energy that I had um, making that move from uh, Memphis to Seattle. Um, now, moving back, you know, after moving, after finishing seminary and then getting accepted into uh, Vanderbilt University, uh, a lot of people in Seattle was like, oh, wow, you got accepted into uh, Vanderbilt. That's exciting, you know. And I was like, well, yeah, that's exciting, but... Uh, I wasn't excited about moving back to Tennessee. Uh, I had, you know, 
when I was living in Memphis before moving to Seattle, um, I had some uh, unpleasant experiences um, that, you know, kind of reminded me of some of the things that happened uh, growing up um, in Memphis or, you know, or in Tennessee in general. Um, and that made me, uh, like one, yeah, one, I was excited about moving, I mean, attending Vanderbilt, but I, I had my concerns based on some bad experiences, um, about coming back to Tennessee. And sometimes I reflect on the idea, did that, you know, sort of bad attitude about Tennessee, uh, did it have anything to do with some of the unpleasant surprises that I, that was waiting for me when I first moved here? Um, I don't know, but I, but, but comparing moving to Seattle to moving back to Tennessee, in my mind and in my imagination, there might be a correlation to the type of attitude and the type of energy I had moving to Seattle versus moving back to Tennessee. Um, before you do something or before you go somewhere, like make a move, like moving out of state or moving anywhere, even moving within a city, um, you're faced with um, what I would consider um, endless possibilities, infinite possibilities of how uh, a decision you make is going to come out. Um, before you do something uh, like, and this is something that I've been that I've had to work on. Maybe because I had like background in accounting, and I used I used to always use these worst case scenarios as what are all the things that could go wrong uh, if I make this decision, and how can I plan? Like if all these all these bad things, all these horrible things happen, what can I do? Um, to plan for and you know for you know I guess in my earlier years that's good um, because there were I did plan for worst case scenarios and then sometimes those worst case scenarios occurred and and I was like I was able to respond to them but then I, I'm starting to think now uh, in retrospect, um, what if I had a different attitude? What if I was like, the worst case scenario isn't going to happen. Um, all the things that could go right will go right. Um, would, would it be, um, would it have been different? Um, I used to work someplace, um, and there was about to be a transition. Um, I was about the the lady who the, the supervisor who hired me, who was the initial uh, hirer for me to come on to this uh, company. Um, they were the organization was about to move me from reporting to her to move move me to work with somebody that. I barely knew and I didn't know their uh, leadership philosophy or their work ethic or anything. And we were out um, at this Chinese restaurant because um, it was going to be like our last lunch together or whatever. And they put, pulled out the fortune cookies and the fortune cookie that I got said, hope for the best, prepare for the worst. And um, I don't know. Maybe it helped me in my earlier years. Um, but I think 
in retrospect, you know, especially with 2020, uh, that is not a beneficial approach to life. I think that you can, if anything, you should be grateful. Be grateful for what you have. Um, because that type of energy uh, is something to work with to uh, ensure that more beneficial energy is coming to you. Um, so we see a lot of memes about 2020 and uh, they're funny. Uh, some have a little dark humor to them. Um, but I'd like to encourage you to um, protect your mind, protect your heart, protect your imagination. Um, because your imagination, your mind, and your heart, uh, when standing in front of endless possibilities, when standing in front of the unknown, you know, there are a lot of people out here that don't know what's going to happen next. Um, they probably facing some, they probably face some really bad experiences, uh, economically um, and and in other areas of their lives um, but what if some of these things that you have faced involve the end of a certain way of approaching life um, in order to make room for something more beneficial for you. I'm going to leave you with that one. Peace and blessings.